Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi and today we are building Treasure Guardian Bullies. So I've been quite interested in this card, which is 6-6, six, six, quest for 2, for the small cost of 4. Very overstats character, but this character can only challenge our quest if it's at a location. Okay, well that's interesting. So what good locations are available? Well, there's a Queen's Castle, that's pretty great. Whenever we have a character there, we get to draw a card, only costs one to move to that location, which is quite nice. And let's look at our other options in terms of location. Bayou has very little willpower. Forbidden Mountain's not quite what I'm looking for. Nothing has the same. <clears throat> Queen's Castle is great, but there's no, there's no super fantastic location outside of it. Sorcerer's Tower is interesting because it does have that 7 willpower, but doesn't give you any lore every turn. You may move brooms there for free, so we'll have to make a brooms deck for that, and we'll do that later. For now, we'll stay off the brooms, leave the cleaning for after we've demolished our foes. Characters there gain plus 1 lore, which can be quite interesting. So, let's play a full playset of Sorcerer's Tower knowing that we mostly want to play the Queen's Castle. Because we want our locations to live. If our opponents can take out a location, then suddenly our big bag sand treasure guardians. Yeah, that's kind of half location, half character, which makes sense. It's a character that needs a location. So it's, it's big beater number one. What other big beaters or over under-costed characters do we have? Well, there's Mr. Gustav, the giant. 6-6-4-3. Six, six, We're getting even cheaper with an even bigger cost. So he's always exerted. <coughs> except that whenever you banish an opponent's character, you may ready, you may ready Gustav. And, well, it has to be through combat too, so you can't just smash an opponent's character and ready your Gustav. So Gustav's going to go hand in hand with our our protector because the protector just has these hefty stats. He can easily challenge and take out a bonus character which readies Gustav and then Gustav's ready to, to brawl really. At least that's a theory. So we have these two very big beaters and we're going to build around those. There's also John Silver, that's quite an interesting character. Not as big a beater as the other ones. <clears throat> but as 3-3, he gains resist 1 for each location we have, and plus 1 lore. And 3-3 three, three, resist 1 for 3? It's pretty good stats. 3-3 three, three, resist 2? Wow, now we're here talking. Especially as a 3-quester, it's almost like a Cinderella Stout Heart, if you have two locations in play. Consider that. It's a 3-drop that's almost a Cinderella Stout Heart. Lots of potential in that card, but you need to keep those locations, you need to keep the locations healthy. So it's going to fit in our list because we have big bullies to protect our locations or to punish the opponent challenging them. Alright, so we're going to be playing with these locations. Um, I want to play Magic Carpet because it allows us to move characters to locations for free. <clears throat> and we need to move these big characters to these locations. And then we want to round up our list. Because we've been mostly playing in the 3-4 drops. So we need some early games, some 1s and 2s. Captain Hook, very good beater. He's been doing his job since the first chapter. First captain chapter. And is going to continue to do so. Then we have the new flavor of the month, Robin Hood, who threatens to shift into Big Daddy Robin Hood, who will also be playing a full playset of, and is going almost as a de facto inclusion in Steel decks nowadays. Kind of like a mini Stitch into Stitch, Rock, Stitch Rockstar was a mainstay in Amber for quite some time, and still sh shows up quite a bit. Speaking of these big shifting characters, we also have Miss Cinderella. 
Cinderella Stout Heart is proven to be quite powerful. Mm. And her two drop version is just solid. So it gives you a 2 7 punch that's worth including in a lot of decks. It's kind of the downside of Tinkerbell. I prefer Tinkerbell to Cinderella Stout Heart just because she costs less, has a nice enter to battlefield. But the tree drop Tinkerbell is just a little too much. It costs three. While Cinderella Knight in Training is just a very, very nice play to drop on turn two. I'll be playing some friends on the other side because we're playing Amethyst and the card. The card's really good. If I can find it, there it is. Okay. Probably want some removal. And Smash does a good job. And then we'll take a look at our list. All right, so we have our location, our big beaters, our early game, a bit of removal. I'd like a bit more removal. And some late game inkables is what we're missing. So we're going to go after some grab your sword for removal. Where is grab your sword? There it is. We're going to be playing two copies of it. And because, because we're playing high hit point characters, I really want to try out Maleficent, Mistress of All Evil, who moves damage counters from our character to our opponent's characters, and having characters with high willpower is more likely to enable that. Also, she has draw power with her divination ability. Uh, I, th I think she could be fun at the very least. And we'll be playing some Beast Tragic Hero for more draw power, and because it's just a fantastic card, as is shown by its price tag. Now we're at 62 cards. What can we cut? Well, we've added draw with Maleficent, draw with Beast. We have some draw here. So let's cut a couple of friends on the other side, send them back to the other side, send them back to our side, whichever. Uh, I'm not sure. And that completes our list. A 60 card big beaters deck and all that remains is to see some big beating in action with some games we're playing against amber ruby with our big beaters deck smash treasure guardians robin cindy magic carpet second smash third smash smashing hand i do like robin carpet treasure guardian i keep one smash keep the cindy and we'll see if we can find a big beast or a location. Friends in the Queen's Castle. That's pretty good. We've hit our four drop location. So off of this, Cinderella goes to the ink pile. On the play, we'll threaten the Robin. Our opponent doesn't know that we don't have the big Robin Hood. Cinderella goes to the ink, and a stitch comes into play. We'll ink our second small robin. We don't really need that one. Now we'll go to quest. Our opponent has a threatening shifter, almost as threatening as ours. Now the inking of that big stitch pretty much telegraphs that our opponent has another one in hand. And I think with that in mind, we need to trade with that stitch. Actually, we can trade Robin. I didn't expect the opponent to quest off of the stitch. We can aim the smash and land Gustav the Giant. That will quest with the magic carpet. Why not? Then we have bully number one on the battlefield. An imposing 6-6 six, six for three. With a lot of downsides. Ooh, opponent has bare necessities. Get to pick out any card from our hand because we they're all non-character. Probably pick out... Oh, no, that's a character. Doesn't look like a character, but it is. Opponent plays another stitch. I need to ink my Cinderella. And 
And Magic Carpet can just quest. Treasure Guardians will enter play. And we'll pass the turn back to our opponent. So we have Gustav that keeps on being exerted unless we banish an opponent's character. And now we have the Treasure Guardian, which can't do anything outside of location. So we better draw location, we better draw it soon. Do you quest with your stitch? Do you want to risk? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, hashtag top decks. We find Queen's Castle. We can use the magic carpet to move our treasure guardian into the Queen's Castle. Treasure Guardian now has the potential to attack and take out Stitch Rockstar. Gustav gets to ready. We'll sing friends with Mr. Gustav. No, actually, there's no reason to do that now. We'll just pass the turn. Also, I think I forget I forgot to ink that turn. So there was a reason to play friends. Maui, opponents fighting beaters with beaters. Goes after a treasure guardian, takes it out. Four drop that can beat a Maui in a fight. Now that's something. Alright, alright. Well, I think we want to sing friends anyways. Gustav's going to sing. Full power of his voice. Captain Hook. We'll go to the ink pile. We'll land a beast to draw some cards. We'll use the magic carpet to move... Gustav to our location, prime location, perfect for sleeping off that hernia that he probably had. Based on how he's looking, it looks like he hurt his shoulder a little bit. Chernabog. Spicy and fun. Top deck, a small Cinderella. I get to draw a card off of the Queen's Castle and a card off of our beast. All right, well, we're going to ink our Cinderella. Play another carpet, play a treasure guardian. And in the face of Chernabog, that's probably going to take out our castle. We're going to lay down some bait. So magic carpet will go there and beast will quest. I'm okay if our opponent wants to take out our beast. But I suspect the opponent's going to want to go after the queen's castle, which they do. Turn bog and small stitch. Still pick up two cards off of the beast. <coughs> well, let's fight big characters with big characters and land Cinderella. And we'll pass the turn. Actually, looking at how efficient Magic Carpet is. I think it would be a viable option for the aggro deck from last week. If you haven't watched it, after the end of this video, go watch the aggro deck. It's a more competitive list than this one. But I think Magic Carpet could play an interesting role. The ability to just move characters to location is quite nice. Find a smash, which would allow us to take out Chernabog. Probably want to do that. Then again, we can quest for 5, 18, with a pair of evasives. Yeah, let's take out Chernbog. And let's just get questing. <laughs> that top deck Queen Castle, though. That was great. We got our beaters to do their beating. And even took down a Chernabog by combat. We are playing against Steel and Emerald with our Mega Beaters deck. Robin, friends on the other side. Beast, John, Gustav, and Big Robin. So Double Robin is pretty solid. Probably don't want the pair of friends on the other side. John and Gustav. Okay, and we'll, we'll keep the beast just as an inkable card. That seems fair. So a slight one card mulligan. We find magic carpet and we're off to the races. 
Lots of fun stuff with that hand. Gonna have to ink either John or Gustav early on. So we can land Ron. Turn one, Robin. Turn two, Magic Carpet. Seems like a pretty decent opening. Is the open and uh, is our opponent open up with Cursed Merfolk? Going straight into discard mode for our opponents. As well, ink our beast and land Robin Hood. Of course, threatening Big Robin, Champion of Sherwood, who's been taking the meta by storm, or at the very least seeing quite a bit of play. The ability to shift him on turn three is mm, so yummy. I'm not sure if our opponent's playing discards or just super trigger happy aggro. Considering there's steel, steel's not really as aggro. Oh, a Bucky. Okay, so it's a Floodborne discard deck. Ursula tries to pick out a song and hits our friends on the other side. That hurts. Hurts quite a bit. As opponent goes to quest with the Cursed Merfolk. Oh, and we find the Queen's Castle. That is a fantastic draw. draw. I think we're going to ink our Maleficent for now. Land a Magic Carpet, along for the ride. And I say we pass here. So I'm putting the opponent on discard. Card advantage is going to be more important than lore account. I just want to resolve a couple of my big beaters. As the opponent resolves Ursula, Queen of Trouble. Find another magic carpet. We don't need the second one. Off to the ink. And Ursula has a lot of threatening scenarios. But most of them... I mean, there's Mother Knows Best would be a bit troublesome. Although we could pick up both Robins and then ink the smaller one. I think I need to keep all of my inkables now. So I'm going to hit Ursula. Quest of the Magic Carpet. Going up to three. Then we'll pass a turn back. There's just so many things that Ursula can sing. Let her knows best or let the storm rage on. Let the storm rage on. Double ping on Robin. Well, we'd still keep it alive. And we have... We, we get to kill off Ursula on the backswing. Strength of Raging Fire. Double hit to Robin. That hurts. So we find a beast. Beast is a pretty good card. Now here I think I want the Queen's Castle because the opponent has very few ways of pressuring. So we're gonna ink Gustav. Land the Queen's Castle. And Magic Carpet. Magic Carpet can move itself. So Magic Carpet will move itself to the Queen's Castle. I believe it can fly. I believe it can fly away. And I don't know more songs. There were more lyrics to the song. Just the, the simple ones. Opponent lands a beast. So there's no discard in our opponent's hand. We have to be careful about that total lore count. Opponent goes to quest with Prince John. That's interesting. We'll take the extra card off of the Queen's Castle. Now we can go five or one and three. 
I think we're going to have to take out that Prince John with a magic carpet. It's too much lore, too much of a threat. And these tragic heroes pretty nice. I think I want to go with John Robin. Just put a bit more pressure on the board. I'll ink Beast for now. I'll move John to the Queen's Castle. One draws two cards off of the Beast. Oh, oh a Flynn to the ink. That's not a good sign. There's a hard cast at Robin. It's quite a problematic card. Then our John has resist and plus one lore. Opponent has seven questing power on board. That Curse Murpho has been doing a lot of work this game. Turn passes back to us. We get to draw two. Well, I think here I want to ink the friends, drop my hand on the board, and take out the Cursed Merfolk for free. So now the opponent can quest for five. So I need to apply some pressure. Let's quest for two with John. Pass the turn back. We do have Maleficent, which can play some interesting tricks that I'm going to have to be reminded of at this point. Now, since we're here, we might as well look at the enchanted version. Whenever she quests, we may draw a card. Whenever we draw a card, we can move one damage counter from a character we own to chosen opposing character. So as long as our character lives, we can redirect damage. Find Treasure Guardian. We draw a bonus card off of the Queen's Castle. So we get to trigger Maleficent if we want to. Do you want to? I don't think so. It's too bad we don't have any damage counters on our own characters. <clears throat> Here, John can have a hit on Robin. Although the opponent can just quest for five next turn. We can't take out two characters. Oh, we can draw an extra card. I've somewhat forgotten if we're playing removal spells. So, John's gonna go and hit Robin. I'll draw a card off of Maleficent. We get to move one damage from John to Robin to take it out. Quite a fun synergy. Land at her treasure guardian. Move it to the Queen's castle. Move Maleficent to her castle. Right before we lose the game. It's quite a close one. But without the ability to target ready characters... We really needed a hard removal spell. And I probably should have sacrificed a card earlier to take out that cursed merfolk. I think if we would have done that, maybe we could have swung the game our way. Close game, fun game, but a loss. We're playing a mirror match. Steel Amethyst against Steel Amethyst. I'm putting our opponent on Jafar combo, and little do they know that we are not playing Jafar combo, we are playing the furthest thing away from Jafar combo. We're playing Big Beaters. Probably don't want to grab your sword. Have a Robin to Robin, John Silver, Cinderella in the middle. Seems like a strong hand overall. Boss is on a roll for our opponent, goes to the ink, and they play a Diablo, which I'll have to read. Don't necessarily want a pair of John Silvers. 
Let's we'll play Robin. If it hasn't turned back. What does that thing do? Diablo, fateful pet. Whenever you play a character named Maleficent, we look at the top card, put it on top or bottom. Okay. Yes, a Jafar. Jafar combo it is. Ooh, magic carpet. That's a nice pickup. Except the opponent's playing steel. Steel means trouble. Still, go after the magic carpet turn two. Evasive little fellow. Or piece of tapestry. It's not tapestry. Floor tapestry. Are carpets floor tapestry? Let me know in the comments below. Or let me know something more useful or more fun. <laughs> That's the opponent quest with Jafar. Or Diablo. So we have a nice little Robin Hood that's just waiting to come out and take down a character opponent decides to quest with the faithful pet and Jafar stays put don't need another Robin Hood which we do need well we we do but the one we already had in hand shift shifting powerhouse Take out the Black Parrot of Doom. Get to lore. Let our carpet do its carpeting. Carpentry? Yes. Carpentry. Carpet doing carpentry. Robin doing robbing. I guess Robin did rob the king. I mean, if, if they spun the the story a different way, it could be that Prince John was actually the the bad guy. Wait, he was the bad guy. Did I mean good guy? No, I meant bad guy. Cobra goes in. Gets a little face off against Robin. Which surprises me. Maleficent hitting it would have given her opponent a card. A little bit of a misstep by our opponent. But we'll draw the card off of Robin's ability. Card is grab your sword. And Kida comes in to bodyguard the big snake. Now that's a job I don't want. We're going to anchor Cinderella. Land John Silver. And I think that that's our turn. We can free quest. John Silver, 3-3, three, three, quest for 1. But he gets resist 1, and he becomes a 3-3 three, three, resist 1, quest for 2, once we have a location in play. Which is honestly pretty good stats. Ooh, another Cobra. Or Arbox, as we like to call them. I don't know if Ekans say that on stream. Ekans. Uh, just playing around. Oh, we have Maleficent's castle. We have a double location. Which is quite interesting. I really want to play the Sorcerer's Stone. I mean, I should probably be inking the Sorcerer's Stone, but I'm going to ink... I'm going to ink the Beast, which I'm pretty sure is a mistake. But I really want to try out that Maleficent. I will just quest with the carpet. I want to do some shenanigans. It's the entire purpose of playing this deck. Do not try this in tournaments. Doing intentional bad plays is typically frowned upon. Or, well, not frowned. Your opponent's probably going to be happy about it but I want to play that Maleficent as the opponent plays the magic broom that's the three drop let's figure out what that thing does uh, actually we, we can redistribute damage 
That's interesting. You can pick up one damage from Jafar and send it to Kida. Let me grab your sword. It's going to take her out. Or maybe I should have aimed that Jafar. Yeah. I haven't been playing around with that trigger very much. Could have done so much more. I can move one more to Jafar. I don't want to drop a location and then just let my characters all, all go to waste. Alright, so I can hard cast grab your sword. Deals with these two. Two damage here. Probably want to face off against Jafar. Yeah, alright. Let, let's, do, let's do it this way. Let's sing grab your sword with Maleficent. Take out Kida and Jafar. I'll skip the card draw. We're going to... Play Queen's Castle, which gives John resist. So John's going to survive fighting Jafar. Magic Carpet can move Maleficent, and we can move the Magic Carpet to the Queen's Castle. And suddenly our opponent has a one-powered character facing off against a very highly populated Queen's Castle. Probably should have read the card before. While the brooms are at a location, it gets plus two. I mean, our opponent is playing a Magic Brooms, Jafar-style deck, so... We're going to play our fun cards in this matchup. Because trading card games are all about having fun. Opponent decides to sacrifice their broom because they forgot that John Silver gains resist one off of the Queen's Castle. And that's just disgusting now. So Maleficent will move one damage from John to Jafar. We draw a card off of the Queen's Castle. We'll move one damage from John to Jafar. Jafar goes down. We draw another card off of the Queen's Castle. And that is game set and match, as they say it. Going to add another location, just because we can. And so John can quest for three. And yeah, might as well. Draw more cards, and we'll get some more off of a magic carpet just to go end the game a little faster. As we are sitting with Lidl on board, and our opponent's battlefield is empty. Honestly, that Maleficent it is surprisingly powerful. The ability to just move damage counter even from your opponent's character to the, your opponent's character is a lot. Oh yeah, we, we can also send a John to the, the Sorcerer's Room to gain more lore if we want to. But that's it. We win off of some nice cool triggers and some cool resistance from the John Silver. Overall displayed some of the fun dynamics of the deck, which I like. See what our treasure guardians can do against a Ruby Amethyst. Actually, it's Amethyst Ruby, so it must be a completely different deck from the top tier deck or the old top tier deck. I haven't been following the meta game enough. Should take a closer look. All right, I have one location, a carpet, a John. That seems like a very good hint. We will keep it as is. All right, and off to the races, we are going to start by inking Mr. Robin Hood. It's a great card. But I really want to see that Sorcerer's Tower in play. Maybe not with a second magic carpet. But with, that, with at least one. I do have to be careful and have to 
We have to be prepared in this matchup. And our opponent has teeth and ambitions, so Minnie's going to shoot down our carpet. Or really throw a big lion at the carpet. The lion is going to bite into the carpet. The carpet is ruined, and therefore the car carpet gets banished. Um, you yeah, know, let's take our Cinderella. Lion Mr. John. See some John Silver action. John over there holding. Oh, well, he's holding on to big anchor. Feeling power hungry. Greedy treasure seeker. Opponent inks. One of the meta mims. And here comes the fox. Four, t four tree rush beater. Always ready to cause trouble. Maybe I should highlight the sorcerer's stone. Sorcerer's tower. <clears throat> Wrong game. You can ink a robin. I mean, Sorcerer's Tower is interesting. Characters get plus one there. We can move. No, we can't move John because it, it would cost two. So I'm tempted to friends. But if I'm playing friends, I need to sing friends. Just a lot more efficient. And I guess we'll land the tower because we have nothing else to play. Oh, Madame Min's going to have to trade with John if she wants to take it out. And we're a little too early for Maui. Of course, oh, Mim is going to go and destroy our Sorcerer's Tower. Goodbye. Claws of Doom. Okay. Well, that's problematic. We can ink our Cinderella. And sit tight with our flurry of five drops. Actually, let's take out Madame Men. And land a beast. If our opponent's going to be playing some serious cards, we might as well bring out ours. The tragic hero. Pretty much defining Rise of the Floodborne at this point. Pulling a good amount of the weight of value of the set. We draw two cards and see double off the top of our deck with a pair of robins. Send one out. On five. We are near the Lady Tremaine turns. So I'm tempted to take out Merlin. Have some damage on Beast. And take advantage of that to land a Maleficent as well as a Robin. Robin's there mostly for Lady Tremaine protection. I mean, the Min Fox could take out Beast. It's about what I'm most worried about. Madame Medusa is going to go after Robin. I'm going to have to reread Madame Medusa. Because I thought it was 1 to 3 ink, but I'm guessing now it's 1 to 3 power. That explains why people are valuing that card so much. Yeah, 3 power or less. 
It's a much stronger card than I was giving it credit for. All right, all right. That's the way you want to play. You can draw a card off of Maleficent. You can grab your sword. Deal two to boat. Hmm. You can also go for Big Robin, take out Mini. I don't like committing that much to the board. I get to draw a card off of Maleficent if I do that. But I don't force to be prepared. I'm not sure what I want to do here. I think I want to land another beast. Then do I sacrifice the Maleficent for a card? That's the question. Well, maybe we do that. We'll sacrifice a card, but we'll take out the mini. So we'll draw a card. Take two on. Take a card off of Maleficent, deal two to Mini, deal the third point of damage off of Robin and Maleficent trigger. Opponent's likely to be prepared since they didn't go after Maleficent. They don't want us to have a Beast Tragic Hero. Alright, here's a Be Prepared. <coughs> That's alright. We've got a backup Maleficent. And Robin, protect from Lady Tremaine again. Although it's likely our opponent is going with Madame Medusa's. Or a less legacy. I like to see that. And nothing else. That allows us to draw a card. I was going to say safely, but it's Maui safe. Get a ping that, land a hook, and pass the turn. I'm afraid of a backup be prepared at this point. Merlin Goat goes in. And there's a Maui. That is the other uh, troubling option. Maui Mini. All right, well, here we have a nice setup for double grab your sword. Three, four, five, six, seven. Not enough to take out the RLS legacy. And now he's going to take out one of our characters. I think we just go Robin. Plain old Robin. And we'll send. We'll send the boat at the RL set, RSL legacy. If Maui go, well, Maui has the challenge, so Maui's going to challenge one of those. The other one's going to finish off the trade. We're going to smash Mini. Ooh. Board up and double grab your sword. Yeah, maybe we just double grab your sword instead. Let's see what the opponent does. Maui hits hook, as is wise to do. 10 to 4. Mini gains double evasive. Bunny gains double single evasive. And Mini goes to ping. Ooh. Why? Why would you? Why would you do that? So now we can take out the RSL Legacy. Sing, grab your sword and land a Maleficent. I definitely want to play to grab your sword. Let's sing it off of Robin. 
Take out Maui, take out Mini. I want to take out the Darasal Legacy, it's troublesome. Fortunately, I'm going to lose Robin. Which is a shame with a Maleficent. And it will damage on Robin. And the opponent's likely to make that trade. And hopefully, there's no backup be prepared. Madame Medusa does not look kindly, uh, kindly on Robin. And Bunny takes out the other one. I thought Robin was friends with all the forest characters. Well, it's true that Merlin's more of a wizard. All right. Medusa, Medusa. Doing some ravages. I do really want to draw that card off of Maleficent. But I can't really make good use of her ability. I think we do it anyways. Draw Smash. All right, well, we'll take what we got and double Smash Meta Medusa. Maybe we'll get another turn of Maleficent drawing us a card. Mini. Jim. Okay, so no Maui. Find a magic carpet. You can hard cast to grab your sword here and play around with the damage a bit. Or maybe we do that to take out Jim next turn. Just play everything. Oh, uh, just play hook. Grab your sword for damage. And we'll use Maleficent to take out Jim next turn. Oh, there's a mini. And another Jim. That's problematic. Wish I still had my grab your sword. I think, I, I think we've spent them all. Alright, so... Mini's going to move some damage to Stylish Surfer, because that thing's hard to destroy. We're going to draw a card. Queen's Castle. And Hook's going to take out Jim, for sure. <coughs> and here I think we have to land Cinderella. Applying some bits of pressure, pressure to the battlefield. But we're quite off tempo as the opponent can go to 18. 18 with friends. Another gym. I knew gym was a good card, but just landing gym hawkings after gym hawkings after gym hawkings is taking its toll. Opponent takes out our Maleficent. Oh, we're going to ink Sorcerer's Stone, land a castle, take out Jim, and move to the castle as a princess should. She counts as a princess? Yes. Cinderella, always a princess, even when she's a knight. A knight whose duty is to protect the princess. Is there a conflict of interest? Maybe. Min Fox comes in, protects Jim. We get to draw some cards, but it's not going to matter. So we can play a Sorcerer's Tower, move Cinderella, quest for four, and concede. Well played, opponent. You put up a fair fight against Ruby Amethyst, but it just wasn't quite enough. Maybe if I would have held on to grab your sword until the opponent played more characters. I'm not sure. I don't think it would have... Well, it would have made a difference, but I don't think it would have brought us close enough to win. Anyways, fun game. We're playing against Emerald Amethyst using our Big Beaters deck. We find our opening hand. A pair of Beasts. Fairy Captain Hooks, a John Silver, a Carpet, and Cinderella. Let's keep 
one hook, one carpet, one john, and a pair of inkables. We'll mulligan to rest. Fine robin carpet. Not the best, but it's all right. Gonna go on a ride on the magic carpet. Opponent opens up with Cursed Merfolk. I'll ink one of our Robins since we don't have the big one. And land Captain Hook. Still a very solid card, Mr. Hook. So the opponent appears to be playing a discard based deck. Which is somewhat problematic, I must say. <clears throat> That's okay, we'll ink a magic carpet, play a magic carpet, and we'll run to the Cursed Merfolk, which will unfortunately force us to discard our second Robin Hood. But the last time I let the Cursed Merfolk stay for too long, we lost the game because of it, so I won't take the chance this time. This kid Cloud Kicker comes in, balancing our Captain Hook back in hand. That's all right. Cloud kicking us. Pick up another Magic Carpet. That's one too many. I'm gonna ink it. And then John Silver. No quest with the carpet. I don't really want to trade. Oops. I don't really want to trade with Flynn and a card in hand. Seems like a bad exchange. Yeah, Kit is pretty good at what he does. Just a tempo play and giving you another character. Kind of a reverse tree drop Maleficent. Mutter knows best. Bounce right back. And Madam and Fox for protection of Flynn. Okay, well, if the opponent wants to go that very aggressive route, two can play that game. Going to go with Hook John. I don't trade with Kit. <clears throat> If our opponent's playing that aggressive, it probably means that their late game is much weaker to ours. So I'll try to re reduce the resources, reduce the amount of the speed at which our opponent quests. Try to reach later stage of the game. Opponent lands a queen castle there. One well, of the best threat they could have found. As Min Fox, um, Min Snake goes to quest. So I'll take out Min Fox. We pretty much have to take out Flynn, which will force us to discard our treasure guardian. Then we'll land. Beast for card advantage. <clears throat> also, we need an attacker. We can't let that Queen's Castle stay uncontested for too long. Fortunately, it's going to get at least one other turn. Mother knows best again. No beast for me. As we find Robin. Let's hit that Queen's Castle at least once. Reland Beast. Pass turn back. <clears throat> this time we can take out the castle next turn. As the opponent lands a goat. We draw two off of Beast. We'll definitely take out the Queen's Castle this turn. Now the next play is a bit more interesting. 
think we want to land Robin. Just have more characters on board, more flexibility. One inks a goat. It's not too promising. Lands another Queen's Castle. And by taking out John, we won't be able to take out that Queen's Castle on the backswing. Opponent gains a lore off of the goat. Alright, well we need to land some stuff. We need to kinda of need to take out that Queen's Castle. Since we can't take it out this turn, I think we're better off just questing. And land some pressure. So I want to in Gustav land my own castle and the Cinderella. Second Gustav is also going to bite the dust. And we can start questing. Opponent is 17. Crab comes in. One of the worst top decks our opponent could find. Quite happy with that. That crab moves into the castle. Which pretty much cements that we need to take out that castle this turn. And the only way I can take it out is by swinging at it with everything. So there we go. Now I want to land as much board pressure as I can. Which I think starts with Cinderella. Find another Robin. We don't really need friends on the other side anymore. Hook can get inked. And I'll land another copy of Robin Hood. Can quest for two, four, six, eight. Plus the two of the Queen's Castle for next turn. Opponent draws into Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo, which is essentially useless. I mean, the opponent could have at least challenged Cinderella before the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Request with Merlin. But at this point in the game, our opponent's drawn a few too many dead cards. And we're going to be able to out-pressure and take the win. Probably should have moved a couple of characters to the Queen's Castle. But really, the opponent has no way out that I can think of. Maybe a friend's, friends on the other side into a goat... I don't know. Well, we take the win off of this clutch game. Opponent got very close, but we managed to seal their seal their the game and take it before they could close it. It's time to look at lessons learned from the gameplay. So our big beaters deck had some good things going on. Uh, we've seen that the Queen's Castle is very strong, as a lot of other videos have shown. Magic Carpet has been somewhat impressive to me. The ability to just whoop, move a character to the magic castle uh, off the ability, I found this pretty good. Also, being evasive 2-1 is meaningful stats, meaningful ability. I've also really liked John Silver, Greedy Treasure Seeker. And even just as a 3-3 resist one that quest for two, it's actually pretty good. And if you can get a second location in play, well, things are just glorious. Gustav the Giant, Terror of the Kingdom, has been very bad. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, I thought he would be poor or not great, but he was actually bad. Uh, I mean, he, you can ready him once and then you're afraid to challenge with him because he becomes tapped again. <clears throat> so not a great card. Um, we've seen... Treasure Guardian's been performing kind of as expected, which is not fantastic. We need another, uh, like a third location in the deck, and we need our our locations to be better. So Queen's Castle's fantastic. 
The Sorcerer's Towers, really not great. Kind of expected that, but I wanted a high willpower uh, location. Doesn't pull its weight. Maybe we should be, be trying out the one drop location so that we can just play the one drop location, move the Treasure Guardian challenge right off the bat and use that as a one hit wonder. And then by taking out the opponent with off of a surprise attack, maybe we can protect our location this way or have a backup location to play with the Treasure Guardian. Maleficent, Mistress of All Evil, has played better than I thought. I thought she'd be just okay, but the fact that she can at the very least trade for a card herself is pretty decent. Now, now, you can play the 2-2 Maleficent that will get you the card instantly, but the shenanigans with damage moving, especially with steel and having access to grab your sword, the fact that you can move damage off of one opponent's character to an opponent's character, and not just from yours to the opponent, has played better than I thought. It's probably still going to get eclipsed by powerhouses like Beast, Tragic Hero, or Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood, who are just fantastic cards. But it's a, it's a fun card to play. And if you're playing with uh, physical cards and you don't have access to everything, it's a perfectly fine inclusion. And I actually play a couple of copies myself if I had them. <laughs> and yeah, so overall the list was okay. Uh, Big Beaters probably isn't the best strategy to play, but a John Silver based deck uh, with some locations can play quite nicely. And the, the big shell of playing these early Beaters Magic Carpet into the bigger Beaters is pretty solid. And then we can probably streamline the middle game a little bit better and have something quite competitive, really. Maybe not top of the metagame, because the deck would have weaknesses. But if you pick aggro, mid-range, and control, and target either the two at the lower end or the two at the middle end, you can have some very competitive matchups. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, had a great time watching me play these big beaters and beat down on opponents and get beaten down on some of the games. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. I was going to say then like, subscribe again. We can only do these once. So comment again. Maybe comment first, like, subscribe, and then you can comment again. Re greatly helps the channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.